Hey, I'm really excited about the today's video as I'm going to be sharing with you an opening which is going to bring you a lot of easy victories while playing white. It happened already to many of my students and I'm sure it'll work for you just as well. We're going to be talking about the perk defense which starts after these first opening moves. Black goes pawn to g6 and if anyone dares to play the perk defense against you, you can crush them like this. More specifically, you're gonna go bishop g5 here, potentially threatening to capture this knight and disrupt their pawn structure. They will play bishop g7, because anyway they played pawn to g6 on the previous move, uh, intending to go bishop g7, therefore they will play this move for sure. And at this point, all of a sudden, you start attacking black by playing pawn to e5. Even though at first it looks like a premature attack, in fact, it's extremely hard for black to find proper defense and it is counterintuitive. And therefore, in a real practical game, you're very likely to win. It's actually the most played moves of black which are leading to an immediate disaster for them. So, what is black going to do here? First of all, they're gonna trade the pawns on e5. After that, because you're now also uh, threatening to take on d8 and Black will lose their right to castle, therefore they will probably take on d1 on by themselves. You recapture by the rook. The black's knight on f6 is still under the attack of your pawn, therefore it needs to go. And if it goes to g4, which looks like the most ambitious move of black, and now it even looks like white did something wrong with this premature attack with their pawn on e5, as now this pawn is under the fire of the black's knight and bishop, and it looks like white is somewhat in trouble. But here you make a sudden move pawn to h three. Instead of protecting this pawn, you're actually helping black to capture it. And when your opponent starts thinking that you are a total beginner and you know you have no idea of what you're doing and they gladly capture the pawn, at this point you go knight d5 and all of a sudden black realizes that they are trapped but by now it is too late. The whole idea of the white is that now you're gonna capture this pawn on c7 and not just that, because after that you're gonna attack the black's king as well as the rook. And in fact, black is defenseless here and it's time to resign, even though the game has <laughs> just begun. Because black can't protect this pawn in, in any way, really. If they go knight a6, that protects the pawn, but only temporarily, because you can eliminate this knight first, trade it off, and after that you're gonna capture the pawn anyway. Therefore, that does not help black. Trying to protect the pawn by the king is equally bad as uh, from here, your rook is ready to attack the black's king, and therefore you're ready to deliver a whole bunch of discover checks. There, there are a lot of things you can do. The simplest maybe is to just, just to go knight b6. Again, you're checking the black skin by your rook, and after that you will still grab the rook for nothing, thus still winning. Therefore, if I go back to this position, you can see that black is just defenseless. On the next move, you will inevitably grab the pawn, and after that, grab the rook thus winning a pawn and a rook for nothing and getting the winning material advantage. That is the line which is absolutely killing it. Let me show you the really cool thing. This is the game database on Lee Chess. So if you're wondering if black is going to be trapped like this, let's look at the statistics. After you go bishop g5, they're most likely to go bishop g7. So you go pawn to e5, the top move is pawn takes, pawn takes. Once again, the top move by far is queen takes d1, rook takes d1. And the most popular response in this case, once again, is knight to g4, which is losing after h3 and the following variation, which I've just shown you. That is crazy that most players go right into this trap and lose the game just like I've shown you. Of course, there are a few other responses of black that you gotta be aware of, and we're gonna take a look at them right now. By the way, I understand somebody will write in comments, hey, but what if they don't play these perk defense against me? Well, uh, to the today's lesson about perk, but if you wanna know traps about other openings that you can use, then I suggest that you check out my other video, four opening traps every chess player should know. It's getting over half a million views already and, and keeps gaining them because the traps are super effective. All right. Let's continue with the today's variation. So we go bishop g5 here, pawn to e5. So far we just repeat the main line. And after the exchange of queens, we analyzed previously that knight g4 move loses for black. What if they go knight to d7, right? What's gonna happen in this case? It is still a natural move of black. Black is still gonna capture the pawn. And in this case, it looks like knight d5 does not work anymore because if you go knight d5 trying to execute the same idea, then black can capture the e5 pawn by the bishop. That is the difference. 
Uh, if black had their knight on e5, then this square is taken away. But now it's not, and they can grab by the bishop and simultaneously protect the pawn. And it looks like at first, you know, again, it just doesn't make sense for white to go for this line. But with God, you cover. You go knight of three here. You are threatening to capture this bishop, eliminate it, and after that, to execute your main threat to grab a pawn on c -son. By the way, notice that right now you're also hitting the black's e7 pawn with your knight with the support of your bishop as well. Therefore, you have a number of threats here. But it looks like black has a safe move bishop d6, which solidifies their position. Black is still a pawn up and he feels like he got, you know, he, he's just doing perfectly well. And that is specifically the moment that you've been waiting for, because now you can say this. <laughs> and after that, you shock them with a sacrifice bishop takes e7. You're sacrificing the bishop because after that you are deflecting the black's bishop from the d6 square where it protected the c7 pawn and now you can still execute the same idea. Grab the pawn and after that win the rook. Right now you already won the exchange and the pawn and in addition to that you're still putting pressure on black because still you've got this rook opposition to the black's king. You can play knight e5 taking advantage of the pin putting pressure on this knight on the f7 pawn. You can also develop your light score bishop somewhere either to c4 to attack the pawn on f7 for, from there, you know, this pawn, or you can go bishop b5 to put more pressure on the knight. And all in all, you've got a lot of attacking ideas, even in an endgame. On top of that, you're still having the material advantage, and therefore, that is clearly winning for white. Here's one more question you may have. What if after exchange of pawns, black does not trade queens and go knight d7 right away? Well, if, by the way, if they want to move the knight somewhere, they really need to go to d7, because otherwise you're going to take on d8 yourself and put the black skin in danger. Therefore, if they don't want to trade queens, they got to move their knight specifically to d7 to cover their queen. In this case, there are many things you can do. You can play just positional, let's say, pawn to f4, but I've prepared another line for you, which is more aggressive. You play pawn to e6, temporarily sacrificing the pawn for the sake of blocking the black's position here. You can see that black's position is somewhat cramped, but also these pawns in the center are currently weak and you can start attacking them by playing queen to e2. From here you already take aim at all these weaknesses black has along the uh, e-file. And if they go, let's say, knight f6 back to protect the pawn by the bishop he from here, then you've got another idea, rook d1. Uh, by playing queen e2, you've vacated that d1 square for your rook, and now it also joins the party and starts attacking black. Now black needs to cover their queen, so they go, say, bishop d7. After that, you play knight f3, just developing the knight, but also threatening to go knight e5, so that together with the rook, you put even stronger pressure on black. And they'll probably go knight c6 to cover that e6, uh, that e5 square. And now you play g3, once again combining development with an attack, because now because your queen is on e2, your bishop cannot go this way, but you are ready to develop it on the next move on the h3 instead. And not only you develop the bishop, but you also threaten to capture that pawn on e6. All in all, you can see that you have a strong attacking position, you're putting pressure on black, and definitely it's not easy for black to escape here, even though they're not losing yet, but you've got a strong attack here, and uh, I would say that in a real practical game, black's position is extremely dangerous here. There, there is also one question I want to ask you. Let me take a few moves back here. And at this point, white has just played rook to d1, attacking the black's queen, and we analyze that if black goes bishop d7, you just continue your development, and after that you start attacking black. What if they go knight d5, which looks a bit more aggressive at first, as black is also somewhat putting pressure on your position, opening up their bishop, etc. How would you play here as white? Please think about it and write it down in the comments below. White has a strong move here, but you gotta find it on your own. And now it's time for the spoiler. Well, you know, it can't be all that bad for black, right? They didn't play any bad moves so far and they shouldn't be losing that badly all the time. But like I said earlier, the correct response of black is definitely not easy to find. The correct move is knight f to d7, which looks very passive, looks like it blocks the black species, but that is the way to go for black. And after knight f to d7, they got an equal game. Here you have different options. The easiest one is to trade pawns on d6. Black has to take with the c pawn because of the pin. 
so they're gonna capture with a sea pawn and from here again you can either just go knight of three and continue your development normally which would lead to an equal game but I think a more aggressive setup for white would be playing queen d2 preparing to castle queenside and after that the good news for you is that you've got this kingside attack for example if they go knight c6 to attack your d4 pawn you first of all protect it and after that you've got this very simple and effective plan of pushing your h pawn forward, opening up the h file, playing bishop h6 to trade off this defender of the black's uh, king, and after that, your queen jumps to h6 and delivers checkmate somewhere on h7. So you've got this super simple aggressive plan, and it's not that easy for black to counter it with something. And even though, objectively speaking, the position is equal, I'd say that in a real game, especially in a blitz game, it's still not easy for black to escape from your attack. And therefore, what's really good about this trap is that even with the most proper response of black, you're still getting a good position which is equal, but even with maybe a little bit higher chances for you. And therefore, you are fully covered here and you can play it safely against even a grandmaster. And as some of you guys correctly pointed out in comments to my previous videos, you can't rely on traps all the time, and that is perfectly correct. And that is why I recorded the free masterclass, the best way to improve a chess, where I'm sharing with you this, the specific techniques used by other students to improve their chess, to reach their chess goals, becoming a state champion, uh, the world amateur champion, getting uh, the title that they were looking for many years, etc. And I'll show you how you can do the same. So if you're interested, you can click the link on the screen or below the video and join the free masterclass. I wish you best of luck and I'll talk to you soon.